Welcome back to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. I am, as always, Chat Show. What a delightful Sunday we have for you today from Santa Monica, California, uh, here at the West Side Comedy Theater. We want to thank the folks uh, here at the West Side for not only allowing us uh, their auspices, but uh, not charging us. Not charging us. Great point. <laughs> Tremendous point. Although, do we want to remind them of that? I think they've forgotten. No one, they're not watching. That they're, no, that's right. Don't worry about it. A lot of great shows here. Go to uh, westsidecomedy.com, check the calendar. Uh, we have a show here tonight if you're watching live and happen to be in the Santa Monica area. <laughs> Raglan and Greer, the return of the great sketch comedy duo that Jamie and I are uh, heavily involved in. Yeah, they're phenomenal. Vanessa Raglan and Joey Greer. Uh, other great shows, so check out their calendar. Right. I have a show on Wednesday. Jamie has a show on Wednesday. My house, oh, I've, I've my got house that sketch here. team, Back Alley Rocket Club, has a show on Wednesday. That's our holiday show, and I'm actually, I think this one's pretty good. Which you rarely say. I know, so so it must be good. Jamie if hates I think, everything. I, give, I hate everything I do. I'm very <laughs> Everything you do. I'm the one who hates everything, everything. Yes, I, I just hate everything I do yeah. and everything about myself. Uh, so. Sammy, how are you? Hey, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I'm much better now, thank you. I was very ill. Yes, you were. A while, but I'm all, all all good now. Nice to see you out of the iron lung. Thank you. And <laughs> let me tell you, it's so much easier to drive and put on pants. It really is. Yeah. Even Morty's out of the iron mm -hmm. lung. Um, I don't have much to report other than uh, yesterday I saw The Disaster Artist, and I cannot recommend this movie enough. However, however, if you haven't seen The Room, yes. you'll still enjoy it, right. but I cannot possibly stress how much more you'll enjoy mm -hmm. it if you're familiar with The Room. That seems first. fairly obvious. Yeah. yeah. You would think, but they've been... Some people just think it's a James Franco movie and don't really... They don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But We uh, live in a very stupid country. You don't have to tell me. Yeah. I have a phone. <laughs> uh, I, too, am a C-minus student, by the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't, don't think I'm speaking from high atop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah. I still don't know how I got through high school. I really don't. I, I mean, I graduated college in nine months. You know the story. I my do, I do. And my friends called it dropping out. They were lucky to have you, let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, when, did, when did you get your honorary doctorate, by the way? <laughs> I'm still waiting from <laughs> San Jose State University. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna fix that one of these the days. The Fighting Spartans. <laughs> they um, made it to a, a bowl game, actually, a couple years ago, and my oh. nephew was one of the assistant coaches. Ah. I had nothing to do with it. Okay. Just the way it worked out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we got some fan mail today, Sammy. We do. Some of it involves a dream that a viewer uh, related involving you. Oh, boy. <laughs> and me. This, if this was something we my brother wrote. Should we just get right to that? I want to apologize in advance. <laughs> Let's get right to that. We have several. Uh, we have, we have a, a fan from Finland writing. Let's go to the dream. Dear Chat Show, I only recently, oh, if you want to write to us, please, uh, kpcsfanmail at gmail.com. That's kpcsfanmail at gmail.com. Dear Chat Show, I only recently discovered the Kevin Pollock Chat Show and have been rapidly burning through the archives in audio form during, really? Can't bear to watch the show? <laughs> audio form during my third shift work hours. I've that's, not heard that term before. That's too many. That's too many shifts. Uh, it makes the hours much more enjoyable, I can tell you. Well, you just... Have. However, I think I may have been listening a bit too much as I have just awoken to my first chat show related dream. Oh boy. Yeah, I've had many myself. <sighs> as my full bladder forced me into a wakefulness, not necessary to share, I vividly recall conversing about a 1980s Harold Ramis and hearing Sam Levine going on about all the all-natural cheese spread product which my parents <laughs> sell at local farmer's market here in Wisconsin. In my dream, Sam had apparently bought several jars from my father and had to admit himself as a cheese spread grouping. Yeah. The comment of which gave Kevin no end of enjoyment. I have no idea who the guest may have been on the show that day, because although a lengthy dream sequence, you had not introduced the guest. This was all pre-show. Wow. It is, yeah. Uh, all this means nothing, of course, but I believe it illustrates how much I have truly ingested of your wonderful program. Or how much he cleverly plugged his family's cheese bread. <laughs> ah! Wow. By writing this email. That's why she's the head writer. <laughs> She smells a rat, you know, although that, he doesn't mention it by name. That was uh, not actually a dream. That's how we began the Tom Hanks episode. It is the Tom yeah. Hanks episode. That's what yeah. I thought. That's what happened. There was no dream, Anthony, yeah. from Wisconsin. But thank you for your letter. Uh, 
Recent guests, you may be wondering if you're new to the show because our guest has brought in a lot of new ears and eyes um, from his own fan base, which we're, we're discovering on Twitter, which has basically exploded um, when he reached out and retweeted the link for today's show to watch live. You can watch us live. You can join us on the YouTube. Recent guests, you wonder, you may want to dial up Brian Cranston, Billy Bob Thornton, Jenna Fisher, Christopher Guest, Lauren Graham, Paul Reiser, oh, and Ricky Gervais. No big whoop. Upcoming, Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, oh! On the 17th, you're going to be here gone. Here? Here, great. Pamela Adlon in the new year, as well as Louie Anderson. Very excited. And we have a winner for the Larry King game. And then oh. we'll get to our guest, because I, I think I've asked him to wait too long. Uh, this is from Charlie Cook. Remember, you can write in a Larry King game to win yourself a T-shirt, which Charlie has. Won a Kevin Pollock Chat Show T-shirt. Larry King game goes like this. Yesterday, I opened a bag of M&Ms. All I got were W's. <laughs> what kind of bullshit operation you running, Mars? <laughs> Hippo Kentucky, you're on the air. Yeah, Come I on! Like shout out. That's pretty good. That ain't bad. I love the shout out to Mars. <laughs> Mars that is brand. solid as a damn rock. As a consumer, I yeah. appreciate the shout out to Mars. I gave a little punch up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, yeah. share that with you. I gave a little punch, <laughs> a little punch up. up. Yeah, he had yesterday opened the bag of M&Ms and all I got were W's. Mm -hmm. um, what, the hell is, what the hell's wrong with you people or something like that? And I put punch it up to what kind of bullshit operation you running, Mars. <laughs> so, it's a, but I felt the first so, part was worthy of the T-shirt. So are you saying that you're going to cut off the sleeves before you send the shirt because they don't no, deserve the full I'm shirt? I'm saying I'm going to send myself a shirt as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Just making sure. Oh, by the way, we I'm are going to cut off the sleeves, top. Charlie Cook, and you need to take a photo and send it to us at K kpcsfanmail at gmail.com. Uh, the last thing I will just mention very quickly is um, a brand new show has dropped on the Amazon uh, that I am in, and I've not been uh, proud of anything I've done in the last 20 years, <laughs> <laughs> except for this. Uh, not since literally 1995, when Casino and Usual Suspects came out in the same year, have I held my head high and how, said, fuck you to a passerby. How dare you besmirch <laughs> She's All That. Yes. <laughs> and End of Days, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, better things. I'm incredibly proud this year to play uh, Pamela Adlon's brother in a couple episodes. But this new Amazon series called The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, some of the best reviews of anything I've been in. I haven't even looked at Rotten Tomatoes before this because I knew it would be devastating. And I'm pleased to uh, report in the uh, mid to upper 90s on oh. uh, both the critics and the audience, which I'm told is a thing, especially for uh -oh. a TV show. Yeah. They usually end up in the 70s when they're beloved. Oh. Anyways. Um, so, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, check it out, please. Uh, I, I, I was singled out on a New York Times review. That, too, has not happened in 25 years. Wow. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. So that Jewish-run media thing that's true? Yes. The right? Jewish-run media only reports on Jews. They wrote nothing about Tony Shalhoub. No. no, no. Who's phenomenal in the show as well. <laughs> um, and the whole, whole cast. Amy Sherman Palladino, the creator of the Gilmore Girls, created the show. And um, yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy good. Hmm. Write to us at kpcsfanmail at gmail.com. Let us know what you think of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Today's guest. So excited. So it was the summer of July, uh, the July of... 2015, like so many of you, when uh, 15, 16, July of 16, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just I, a year ago. A shot in 15, we'll talk to our guest about. I'm in New York doing a movie, and uh, David Harbour, former guest of this particular show, tweets that uh, he lives in New York, or something about living in New York. So, like an idiot, I wrote, I tweeted at him, hey, fucker, I'm in New York, why aren't we having dinner tonight? I don't, I'd never met him. Nope. <laughs> totally presumptuous. Yep. And uh, you take those shots every now and then. You roll those dice. And thankfully, he wrote back, tonight's no good. How about tomorrow? And uh, we've been pals since. We have a missive from him that we will, I will share during the show. And uh, the world kind of changed for a whole lot of people, but certainly our guest today. Please welcome Joe Keery. Is that the correct pronunciation? Just Kiri? Kiri, yes it is. All right. You nailed it. Where, what country is Kiri from? I think it's from, actually I was in Ireland uh, this fall. I'm mostly Irish and there is no Kiri. We were looking for a county. There's a county Kerry. Kerry. But I think it was changed from either O'Kiri or O'Kerry. Mm. So I don't know. Who knows? I could be from 
somewhere completely different. But that's my dad's side. I would stick with the story. It sounds pretty good. Sounds, what yeah. were you doing in Ireland? Yeah. Just hanging out? Just hanging. I uh, had a friend who was shooting over there, just visiting. And you'd never been? Never been. I got a plus one flight out there and just saw Ireland. I got a plus one. You mean your friend who was filming got you a plus one? Yes. I see. Yes, that's really how it happened. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, is this someone that the internet has been reporting about? And what do you feel about this, that the internet is now reporting your love life? Oh, reporting my love life? Yeah. I mean, it's bizarre. It's the new version of Teen Magazine, I suppose. The new version of Teen Magazine. I didn't even really even read Teen Magazine. No, no. no. It's it was for, also for 13 to 16 year old girls. Okay. Yeah. 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 And gender. Yeah. Now the internet is just like, yeah, just the place for it all. Yeah. Is that a fairly new thing that they're following your love life on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I assume yes, much, it but, I, but I wanted to ask. <laughs> yes, it is. So it's got to be weird. I mean, they're, it's pro- they're definitely so- bizarre. byproducts of, of being on an uh, exciting, successful show, right. some of which are fantastic, mm-hmm. some of which aren't, mm-hmm. and then there are a few that are just weird. Totally. I would think. Yeah. Like the obsession with the hair. That, at some point, that's just yeah. got to be, uh, hopefully not annoying, but just weird. Yeah, definitely weird. It's because I, you know, don't have a ton of control over the whole situation. It's just the way that my hair has always grown. And right. My, before, um, my dad would always give me a lot of... Uh, kind of shit about having long hair and trying to cut your hair and like get it you know gel it down you gotta gel your hair down well at least he's the hip dad who says gel it down yeah or so because <laughs> a, a father in the 60s would say cut your hair you hippie yeah just buzz the entire did your dad have long hair himself no he's a kind of got like a poofy sort of you know hair poofy hair, kind of poofy yeah but thick it's like a it's my mom's hair and my dad's hair it's combined into my own hair until your own and my sisters they all have very similar hair so but there's this like you know all along so it just kind of they have nice full heads of hair as well do they, they? yes that's a that's a good thing yeah that's right you grew up with four sisters four yes dear lord yes none of them are balding they're all uh, they're all doing well listen balding. we shouldn't make fun of the unfortunate percentage of men and women myself included <laughs> who may have a hair deficit issue um <laughs> Uh, so four sisters. Yeah, I had one a brother two years older. Mm-hmm. Uh, Max is two years two years older older as well. Yeah, my brother I nicknamed him the torture technician, but I can't imagine what sisters can do torture wise. It was actually okay. Okay, I was kind of probably more the ringleader myself. The troublemaker. Yeah, the shit so my, disturber. My, well, it was my older sister who's two years older, and she had kind of you know she was doing other stuff. She was like doing high school and middle school before us all, so she was kind of doing her thing. She was cool. She was cool. And then it was me, and then four years, and then my little sister, and then two more years, and then twin sisters. So I was kind of, you know, if I had some plans, or you know, I just kind of treated them like brothers and said, okay, we're gonna, today we're gonna jump off the tree onto the trampoline and try not to hurt yourself though. You know, don't tell mom. <laughs> so that type of stuff. You were that older brother. Yeah, well, it's fun, you know. Fun Sounds stuff. a little Bart Simpson. A Let's jump bit. out of the tree onto the trampoline. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Don't tell mom. Don't tell mom. Oh, man. Don't get hurt. Uh, what did dad do? Or mom and dad? Uh, dad Working professions? Uh, architect, and my mom's a teacher. What did she teach? Uh, English. Still teaches. Still? College, yeah. Where? College professor. A university professor? She teaches at Mass Bay Community College. Well, well. In uh, Wellesley, Massachusetts. How about that? Yes. yes. You Where you grew up? Uh, uh, I grew up in Newburyport, close to there, about 45 minutes away. Yeah, I've got Newburyport written down. I'd oh. never heard of Newburyport. It's like, um... It's all one word, by the way, those of you wondering. Oh, that, is that any, sounds like a mistake. It's uh, just, somebody just t- took all the spaces out and just yeah. smushed it. Newberry yeah. itself should be two words. Yep. And Newbury. there's a port. Port. Yes, there is Newbury. It's in its own place. Uh-huh. There's West Newbury, and then there's Newburyport. West Newbury, I'm guessing, is two words. We've spent too much time on this. <sighs> Fuck you, yes. New England. Yes. <laughs> it's a Fuck little, you. yeah, it's a little confusing. Uh, and how was how blissful was that part of the uh, neck of the woods growing up? I mean, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. Right out, like really close to the beach, and um, yeah, big family. I had a pretty, yeah, pretty great time in my childhood. Yeah, no, but quite. like you, actually, it's funny you're talking about like doing. Uh, I was a bad high school student too, actually. I didn't, it's not that I was like a, you know, total dummy where I think you're not a total dummy. I was dummy. just bored. I was bored as hell. Yeah. So it's like, um, I went to a Montessori school when I was a kid for like eight years. Keep talking. 
and did that and was really into that type of school and then went to public high school and it was like this is just the worst thing in the entire world because just it's like so different you know sitting in we didn't really like sitting desks so much it's kind of like it would be uh first second third graders in one class fourth six or uh, fourth fifth and sixth in one class and then seventh and eighth would be the middle school so the school's kind of broken up where you're with people of different ages and you're not like you're all in one classroom kind of doing all these different projects. You said monastery? M uh, no. <laughs> that would be a little different. Right. Uh, Montessori. 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 I'm not familiar with Montessori. That just means like a hippie school? It's kind of like a hippie school. Yeah. 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 So, um, like, I had probably like 50 kids in my what? grade. Yeah. And Crazy. And divided into different groups. But not private schools. Not private. No, it's a charter school. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes. I see. RVCS was the new the school. It was a great place. But then went to high school. And I liked high school all the same. Did, you know, theater and, you know, had a fun time doing sports and stuff. But, like, actual classes were just a total bummer. My problem was bored teachers. If the teachers were bored... Definitely. <clears throat> how bored... Are, yeah. I had a couple classes I excelled in because the teachers were engaging yeah. and exciting. Yeah. And then some of them... Or had a sense of humor. Right. My favorite right. teacher, uh, Mr. Shamani. One of the few I remember. Where is he now? A written exam. You drop off the, the exams at the desk. Yeah. You know, you turn to page one. Instructions, test instructions, preheat oven at 350. <laughs> That's great. What is the ball busting going on out here? We've heard she's, this story 17 she's, times. She's literally giving me the punchlines four seconds before you do it. <laughs> she said preheat the oven? <laughs> at 350. I'll kill you with my bare feet. Uh, with my bare feet. No. Uh, I saw, I knew that you were going to say that 45 fit. seconds ago. <laughs> we have all new listeners and viewers today. <laughs> they don't they know. know. They've never heard <laughs> these ads. Sorry. <laughs> I'm out of a bag of M&Ms yeah. and all I got were W's. <laughs> that was fresh. <laughs> that wasn't yours. Exactly. <sighs> um, now, you mentioned that uh, uh, you moved to uh, Chicago at some point I think we, yes. before we went on the show mm -hmm. so when you're but but college was mm -hmm. where in Chicago it was so uh, because of my I did like okay on the tests not so great um, grade wise GPA wise so I applied to like um, schools in Boston uh, didn't get into any applied to like the state school in Massachusetts didn't get in it was kind of like oh shit like what the hell am I going to do I don't really know what I'm going to do and I'd done theater and uh, uh, in high school a fair amount really liked it and then last minute I think in like aren't you supposed to like kind of apply it's like January, you pretty much know where you're going senior year. Most people, I feel like, are at least finding out. And I was like, I am, like, dead. So my mom, I think in February, found out about the school DePaul, which I ended up going to, uh, and about the theater program there. And me and my, uh, I applied and auditioned for the school and then went down with my dad, or I guess went over with my dad, and visited Chicago. And Chicago's just, like, the best it's city. It's spectacular. It's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Chicago's yeah. such a Let's hear Chicago. Now, yes. If you hadn't told the uh, pre-story yeah. to getting to DePaul, mm -hmm. and just said I went to DePaul University. Yeah, that's actually impressive to the uneducated that you went to DePaul. Sure. The way you tell it sounds like oh well, DePaul's a great school. I think well, honestly, the, the reason that I was able to get in is because they do like a an audition process mm. where I actually could go in <clears throat> and you know meet the teachers and stuff. So it felt like instead of just kind of filling this thing out online and sending it in, I was able to kind of like make an actual impression in person, which I think has always been, you know, something I'm better at than, you know, writing an essay. So I've always kind of like had a little bit more trouble doing that and just it's a little easier. Get me in the room. Talk to the person. Get me just, in the room. Yeah, it's just like a little less. Uh, and your mom helped with that or no? Yeah, definitely. Both my parents were really uh, surprised. They were into it. I don't, yeah. I don't know why. It seems like a total. They had a lot of kids at home. They were desperate to get you out of there. Yeah, they were really like, get this guy like. away. Yeah. 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 I He's just, got our kids jumping out of trees. Yeah. yeah. Breaking arms. Oh, I didn't hear about the breaking arms. No, I didn't break anyone's <laughs> arms. Uh, I didn't actually do that. No, no. She slipped on a soccer ball and broke her own arm. That's so. right. <laughs> that was yes, the official story. That you wasn't my fault. Yeah, you weren't even in the vicinity. No, I wasn't. According to their police that, report. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah. Um, so what theater were you doing in high school? 
Did like um, just like the the plays that you do in high school. What are the plays that God you know, spell? Everybody did, didn't do that one. Not did, <laughs> no, chess? missed that one. Probably Guys did chess. and dolls. <laughs> didn't do either of those actually. Did um, Bye Bye Birdie. These Death are Death of a Salesman. Did. Death of a just the class. Death of a Salesman. <laughs> Iceman no. cometh. Yeah. These, Iceman these cometh. are the shows you want to see seventeen-year-olds yeah, do. Yeah, Richard II. Amazing. In the sun. Yeah. Who doesn't enjoy a seventeen-year-old Willie Loman? Yeah. <laughs> I ask you. Really, the weight of the world upon his shoulders. Yes. Walking with that briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me. And the age makeup was incredible. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. No, it did like um, did like some musicals and stuff, and sure. did some play. Um, but um, I think the thing that I really dug about it is just being able to like work on a project and. Um, I guess it's, yeah, similar to, like, the, the type of work that I did in, like, Montessori school. Even just as, like, a little kid, just kind of focusing all of my energy on one thing um, and, you know, trying to think of different ways to make things work. And also doing, like, lights and sound and stuff mm -hmm. for it. I was kind of, that's how I sort of started doing um, that type of stuff. You yeah. dug that as well. Yeah, also there's this, uh, there's this thing called Drama Fest. Did you guys ever have that in high school? It's, like, this thing. It's really... I can say it's fucked up. Can I say that? Oh, I just, oh ah. my God. Oh, sorry. We're no longer on the internet. Oh, they pulled us. The Crap. FCC yanked us. Um, you, fest as in festival. So there was a drama festival? So, but it's like a festival. It's like they're judging a play like versus a like other plays. So it's like, you know, how do you right. judge that? It's subjective. But it's really fun, you know? Sure. I'm pretty competitive, so it's really a fun thing to, you know compete in from that sports way. you got you became competitive definitely so i played sports when i was really into sports when i was a kid um uh, and to kind of compete in that way is like i felt it was really kind yeah. of fun so just trying to like make the the best sort of um thing that people would see and we kind of didn't have like the best equipment so we're kind of you know it's like macgyvering this mm -hmm. this thing but the school that matt damon went to would always win Seriously? Seriously. They always rocked us. Yeah. <laughs> what school was that? I think it was called um, uh, Cambridge Ringe in Latin. He went to some high school, and they just were so good every year. Now, he you were talking about him or his character from Good Will Hunting? I don't, I mean, it must have been both, <laughs> just because they would yeah. always whoop us. Oh, man, that's annoying. Yeah. Uh, and the sports were basketball mm. and... Hockey. Hockey! Yeah, I played hockey. Jamie from Pittsburgh cares more about her and penguins Jayden. than her Steelers and Jaden. Yeah, they sure, both yeah, love, I love their hockey. penguins. Yeah, hockey's great. Yeah. So you love the Bruins, I suppose. I'm a Bruins fan. Sure. Yep. And that doesn't go over too well in most places. It goes over well with the Penguins because they won the Stanley Cup the last two years in a row. So yeah, they're fine so they're with the Bruins. Okay, yeah. yeah. They don't really care who you like. I do like all the Boston sports teams. Yeah, well, you have no choice. So I have no choice. Yeah. I grew up in a great time for Boston sports. It was like everybody was just winning. Is that right? It was so exciting. Yeah, it was like the, it was, uh, the Red Sox, obviously. <laughs> and then the Celtics had like the Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce. Um, Jean Rondo, Ray Allen, that whole squad. And you were born in 92? 92. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yes. I was born in 92. These two slobs are born in 82. Like and they, six weeks apart. And they're youngsters <laughs> until you yeah. show up. Sorry, guys. No, no, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> he was 12 when they won the World Series. 12. I, that's seriously. Is there a I more like, magical age? I, I know. It's no waiting. <laughs> yeah, it's you, not. A, it's not. I was like, it's been forever. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> they have never won. That's, yeah, that's right. Already. Can you imagine? I, it, like when they lost and Aaron Boone, you know, the year before. Sure. They, and they almost won and they got mm -hmm. so close. I was like, I don't think I can do it another year. I was like, I got to throw up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sat 11 like year old. 11 year old. At 11, you were annoyed just like, oh, by the frustration. It's just too much. It's just too much for me. Yeah. Um, 34 years. <laughs> 34 years. That's waiting, sir. <laughs> Listen to There's you. Nothing. What about the 80-year-old? They're dead. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. the only, I'm the oldest living Cubs fan. <laughs> the 80-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the, I was mentioning about the internet following your love life. Literally on a Google search, like one of the first things that comes mm -hmm. up is you 
kissing your newly announced girlfriend. Ooh, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's just, what the hell? That's just got to be bizarro. It's very, I mean, not really, uh, yeah, it's weird. It's crazy. I don't know. I think it's just mostly also since the uh, the show just the, the second season, recently. too. Yeah, because the first season, you know, I, uh, I, I, I don't think I was as you know, big apart. They, I was kind of still on the exterior, but this time I got to kind of like interact with the kids and be around a little bit more. So for whatever reason. Train tracks. You know, yeah. Come on. Yeah. It was fucking awesome. Train tracks. It was the best one. But yeah, it was so fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah but, well, we were talking on the drive here about in the first season, your character, Steve Harrington, was basically. Uh, James Spader. James Spader. I, literally, yeah. That's like, yeah. Yes. That's or. the idea. Well, there's two there's two '80s villains. There's two villains for every '80s movie. There's either James Spader or Bradley Whitford. Mm, Bradley. But Whitford. you're more of a James Spader for sure. Tried to just like combine, yeah, you know, <laughs> make your own breed of that type of guy. Yeah. Kind of like a. But the research suggests originally you auditioned for Jonathan. Yeah. So in Chicago, I graduated from school and worked for a year. You graduated in 2014. 2014, worked for a year and um, doing like commercials and I, it was like teeny parts on like um, Chicago Fire, that show, just trying to make Sure, tables. a lot of co shows shooting in Chicago. It's great, it's actually such a great place to start because there's so much commercial work because of all the comedy and it's just such a small pool of, like unlike here, I, I mean I honestly think if I had come right out here I would have had, you know, such a hard time because in Chicago there's probably like, you know, you know everybody in your age group who's going for the parts that you're going for. So it's, it feels like right. it's not, it's But there's just a shit small, ton of work available. Exactly. Too. So like kind of if you just, you know, And they have their own Madison wise. Avenue in terms of commercial work, there's a shit ton. It's just so much. Yeah. yeah. So you get to like know all the casting directors and, you know, make kind of like these relationships. It's a great place to start. Anyways, tape, uh, you know, you get... A bunch of... You got put on tape for Jonathan? Just or you, a bunch of stuff. Or you we, went in... We got put on tape by one of the casting directors who was doing something. When they were doing, like, the big... You know how they do those big, you know, searches across. So it's like one in a... They looked at thousands. I know. As it's the like, story goes. It's like... It's a ton. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, every time my agent calls with an offer, mm -hmm. I instantly go down the list of 40 other guys they yeah. must have gone to first. I mean, me too, yes. But in the case of the character of Steve Harrington, according to the research, mm -hmm. the Duffer brothers mm -hmm. literally looked at thousands of tapes. Yeah. That is mind boggling. Definitely. When yeah. you get plucked. It's like a one in a billion, for sure. It's or like, in this case, 16,000. 16,000, yeah. <laughs> one in 16,000. But still, <laughs> It's, yeah, it's crazy. Donkulous. So, it's crazy. So uh, do you get the bad news about Jonathan? I just didn't hear anything, which is, you know, usually, usually the how case. it goes. So yeah. no, bad news travels and, slow. And they included this like sick trailer that they like cut together from, you know, like Jaws and the thing and like uh, Close Stand Encounters by me. and Stand By Me and like this really cool trailer and had this lookbook on that was emailed that looked like this old paperback book that looked like a Stephen King book. So it was like, Oh my God, I remember getting it being like, this actually looks really, really cool. I'd love to. And it was called Montauk because they're going to film it in Montauk originally. Oh, that's right. Um, and then I remember auditioning for it, being like, yeah, okay, I felt like pretty good about that. And then, yeah, you don't hear anything for a while. So they sent this lookbook to the casting director in Chicago or they sent it to every one I of these 16,000 kids who auditioned for... I mean, I that doesn't make any sense. Maybe my agent at the time from Chicago got, their got it. And then I got to see it through that. I think they might have included it, though. I don't know. And they're casting out of where? Where were the Duffers? This would have been L.A., probably. Located. It must yeah. have been at the time. Because they live out here, so. Right. That's pretty. So so yeah. you don't hear the news about Jonathan, but your agent says, down here. let's put you on tape for. Two months kind of go by. Which is and, forever. Which is forever. Mind, it's over. Guy, it's long gone. And then I had... Um, I had a friend, and it was kind of a long story too. We have time. It's like a friend who was in my class at school, dropped out and drove across the country, ended up in LL, and ended up here in LA. And his sister, sure, bear with me, we're with you, moved Brother, to sister. LA from Chicago. Uh, no, from Louisville. Get that stories greater. Uh huh. And she kind of like starts to work uh, at this management company, and so she, we start kind of working together. And now she's, she's my manager. Out. So she kind of got the secondary audition for the Steve hey, character. Why don't you put yourself on tape for 
do you? Heard about that, said, okay, might as well do it. Taped, and then went to my sister's wedding. And what sort of work do you do for the ad audition of putting yourself on tape? And are um, you freed? Sometimes when you... It's all, you know, it's When free. you get a little bit of rejection from any, from any aspect of the thing, in this case, the Jonathan part, mm -hmm. you feel kind of freed up because you're to, like, well, this is never going to You might as happen. well just fucking give whatever you want. Right. Yeah. So that relaxation, I think, is helpful. Yeah, definitely. And it's like at, the, the, the side that they gave it was the um, side of him, uh, of the breaking of the camera thing. And it's a total, it's like such a dick. classic dick villain. Yeah. So it's so, and I kind of feel like when I read it, I was like, oh, okay, I pretty much have a... Um, He's a bully. strong idea, you know, yeah. in like a bully in a way that's not like a big, like tough no. guy, but like a intellectual sort of like, fuck you dude, sort of uh, bully. So taped it with uh, my friend, Matt, who is a buddy from Chicago and we just taped it on like my iPhone and sent it in and you know, yeah. probably went and got a And how piece soon of pizza after, after, how much time know. goes by after you send in the iPhone audition? The iPhone audition, as they say. So uh, fucking beautiful. I don't know. Um, maybe like, a, I do remember so I had to do, wedding. I did do two things. I had to uh, chat with them on Skype, the two brothers. Uh oh. So, you know, like set up your room, make sure it doesn't look fucking crazy. <laughs> and then you Skype with them. They're really great. They're like awesome guys. And then. I went back to, uh, I went back and went to the wedding, my sister's wedding. And then the last request is they asked for me to uh, send a picture of myself without a shirt on. Uh oh. So I wasn't gonna be like, I'm not gonna like send a photo. I'm not gonna like take a photo. So I think I had like a photo at the beach or something like that and just like sent it to them. Cause I think they just wanted to make sure I didn't have, you know, I don't know, I wasn't massive or had just a big skull tat or something. Also or, at that point, uh, the research shows that Steve Harrington was a competitive swimmer, if I'm not... Oh, yes. That's probably... Actually, you know, that's probably the reason that they, you know, <laughs> did that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. I don't know why I never thought of that. Um, <laughs> this yeah. whole time, you've been like, it's weird. They never really think we were shooting. Let's, and let's, this happened in <laughs> 15, right? Yeah. Yeah, so let's fast forward to in today's world. Mm -hmm. Hey, would you mind sending us a picture of yourself without a shirt on? Yeah. Back then when I had no work, I would be like, oh yeah, definitely. I'll say, sure, what else do you need? Yeah, yeah. Yep. no. What else does Mr. Spacey need? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, um, so, uh, so yeah, so you send the, you just send a random photo of yourself that you already had. Sent it, and then I think it was a picture of me with my family at the Cape or something like that. Perfect. That summer, and then uh, got back to Chicago and was waiting tables uh, at the job that I had. And uh, I got a call and they said, yeah, they want to like give you the part and then had to run back inside. And I kept working for the next, you know, like three months knowing that I had kind of booked this thing. Your waiting tables at Cheesecake Factory? Close, it's, just, it's like a burger bar. It's like a kind of a high class, like cheeseburger place. Okay. So I was doing that just, you know, still paying my rent until I... You step outside to, make, to have this call with your agent, mm -hmm. your Chicago agent. Step outside, yep. And your Chicago agent says, what are the exact... Um, it wasn't Chicago at that point. It was, ah. it was the two man... Uh, it was Rebecca. Out manager. in L.A.? Out in L.A., yes. So she, she got her management company to kind of... Yeah, so you? I was kind of like, you know, going on things. Are you know, with them was, now? Yes, uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. And they... Um, so she did really well. She is, yeah, she's killing it. She's <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, she's so great. And, um, yeah, I mean, to call... I, I can't really remember the exact words. Um, maybe something like... I just remember it was kind of like a group call and there's some excitement and you, you know whenever there is a call and there's more than one person on the line that's either bad news I just had or that good recently news. Yeah. Uh, and it made me sort of laugh yeah. when, when the assistant instead of saying hold for fill in the blank yeah. they say I've got and then they name three people I've got Jack <laughs> yeah, Johnson and, go, and see that's my attorney Kirk. and my two agents yeah exactly okay this they're cannot all be bad news okay this has got to be <laughs> yeah. good it's yeah. so it rare that they all get on the phone together to say yeah you didn't you get it. Yeah, right. we all wanted to be here for this, but you know. But if the how phone call is ever, I have the CEO and the head of HR. Oh, yeah. no, that's, that's bad. The, you don't you want don't that want, phone that's call. That's the bad call. You Betty? do not want that one. What's the head of HR's name? Betty. Uh, sure. <laughs> Betty from HR. Oh, Linda. Linda. Oh, it's always oh, Linda I'm from John HR. Oliver. Yeah, it's always Linda. <laughs> it's always Linda from HR. Um, sorry. Uh, 
More? Or water? I probably should drink water. Whatever you like. Chug to the coffee. We can Maybe. make it happen. Sure. Yeah. Um, so you got to go back into work. Back into work. See, I love these moments. You know, I love the yeah. origin story of any particular success, right? Definitely. I mean, yeah, it's like there was a guy. I remember the thing I do definitely remember is that there was a guy um, uh, just taking out his trash. Just saw him and I just went, you know, I was excited and was, <laughs> I think I, you know, just like gave him a little high five and just went back. He's on. wondering, that's the most excited waiter I think I'll ever meet in my life. Yeah, he's like, that guy <laughs> must have had a really big tip or something. Good. <laughs> yeah. And then the whole shift, I didn't like want to like, you know, say, we'll walk back in the restaurant and be like, you know, whoa, or whatever. But my friend Matt, who actually helped me tape the side, he was, you know, a great friend of mine, was, you know, he was a food runner at the restaurant and I remember just being like, Matt, dude. I'd be like, like our guy, and we, you know, just shared this kind of very quiet but excited personal sort of. Yeah, and also at the time, most people don't know what the words the Duffer Brothers mean. I, yeah, I, they'd only done that one. They'd written for Wayward Pines. Which I en show. enjoyed very much. Yeah. It was just stupid and weird enough. Uh huh. And then that movie Hidden. Right, which was in fact hidden. Which was a hidden film that <laughs> many people still think is hidden. Well, I saw I that actually, movie Hidden Fences. Hidden Fences. Yes. Isn't that it? <laughs> <laughs> and weirdly oh, hidden fences. Yeah. Um, so you, you say you continued that job for three months? Yeah, so the waiting just kind of did, did the uh, continued wait tables and I think you know, doing some crazy. But the ads. show is not a pilot, it's a series, right? I think it was oh, at that point, yeah, picked up for all eight. Granted, I only thought I would be in, I think I was only signed on for four. Right. So That's I right, the first was, season your character was like recurring, he wasn't a series right, regular. Right, right, right. So I was kind of, you know, aware that, yeah, it could just be like a go shoot in Atlanta for a little bit and then that's it. Mm -hmm. So And is yeah. there a table read? What's the initial gathering? Oh, for yeah, the table read is yeah crazy. Go down to Atlanta. You're staying in this hotel. The, uh, I guess I won't say the name of the hotel. Can I um, guess? Yes. The Georgia. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. What room? Yes, sir, I don't know. What oh, what room? <laughs> I was just there for a film, and it the is Georgian funny. Georgian Terrace. Yeah, the Georgian Terrace. Oh, How many? I always God. stay under the name John Lovitz. That way, no one will bother me. Thank you. There you go. Uh huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Man. But uh, it's amazing how many productions are there. It's crazy. It reminds me of Everybody Vancouver in the 90s. The, it sure. is, it's show business. I was little south, then. Southeast, yeah. But I would imagine, yeah, it's just everybody who's shooting down there staying at the Georgian Terrace. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, stayed there, went to the, the uh, like hung out in Chicago for a while and then flew down. Right. Flew first class for the first time in my life. Yeah. Holy moly. Wait, but just from Chicago to Atlanta? I Well, so that was the first, I was like, this is... You know, this was before I even knew that they had the, the <laughs> where you go all the way <laughs> the down. Flats. So you flew on Delta, did so you? I flew on Delta yeah. and you know, from Chicago to yeah. Atlanta, it's literally your seat goes back maybe like this far. <laughs> and I thought it was like the most amazing thing <laughs> yeah. that had ever happened. Um, then went to the table read and yeah, I mean that type of stuff is really crazy. Cause you see, cause I, you know, I was a fan of David Harbour's, obviously, and then fan of Winona's. I grew up watching her. Winona movies. was iconic, is iconic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so going to the table read and And how of, many network uh, Netflix uh, jerks were there? Is Ted there? I think a lot. I, think yeah. a, I actually don't mm, remember Ted being there, but there were a lot of people who, from Netflix who were kind of down for the table read. And it was in the Georgian Terrace that we did the first table read. Oh and it was in the Christ. basement. Oh my God. In Christ. like the, whatever, the conference room. It right. It's like an Austin Powers set or something like that. And all sitting around this table and, you know, meeting all the castmates and the kids and meeting like Natalia and uh, just me. I don't think Charlie was there at that point though. You no, know, Char uh, Charlie, the other guy who plays uh, Jonathan, was, um, I think he was shooting some other thing. Anyways, yeah, just crazy, really surreal. And also to like, I'd never moved somewhere for a job like that. And Relocation it's, fee. It's really wild. It's also like when, when you go to a city and you don't know anybody, at first it can be so lonely. It's oh, for like, sure. That's what Los Angeles is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was like my first time ever doing that. And obviously I'd, I'd moved some somewhere for school and you know I'd done that but you kind of like have sort of like built-in friends already when you go to school doing this it's like you know 
as much I'm either going to call David Harbour, some, you know, 11-year-old kids to hang out, <laughs> or, you know, this girl that I have to kiss in three days for the, and meet her for the first time. So it's like, Jesus Christ, you know, and you're shooting this show. It's really crazy. And you're a year out of college. That's the other yeah. sort of dumbfounding part of this. Yeah, I mean, that's mostly, I feel like just, like you said, just luck being kind of plucked out and kind of that day doing the audition you know, if I had done it one day later, I might have just totally bombed it. And then it might have not happened. So it's kind of just like... It's a great know? story. It's yeah. a great story. Don't kid yourself. It's yeah. a fa fucking fantastic story. Pretty crazy. I I'm going to check in with the... Uh... Why well, didn't send you anything? I figure I could just ask them myself. Let's go to Jamie for the first so, question from your fans yeah. on Twitter. Um, I'm going to go hey, through. Twitter. Hey, Twitter. Hey, Twitter. You know what? Take, give me a second. Oh, you're gonna Take go through. Them? I'm gonna go through. All right. Well, I have a question. Sammy, which we started to talk about beforehand. Oh yes. And I know uh, this hair. Yes. Which is, if I may, it really should be getting its own billing. It should. In the open I credits. just honestly am the person who carries it from yeah. place to place. Uh, okay. Uh, to yeah. that, I have a note here. Oh. Only recently, this is kind of exciting news. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, Joe's hair has its separate own representation. Wow. Does yeah. it? I didn't even know this. He didn't even go run it by me. That's what funny. agency are you represented by? Gersh. And his hair is with WME. There that's, you go. Wow, that's very exciting. I don't know when the hair was planning to break the news. I'm sorry, did you, are you just hearing this now? <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> wow. I should have told you off camera. Can we pull, pull, the, pull the plugs, please? I need to have a conversation. So, I recently moved to Gersh myself. Ah. Mm. Fine folks at the Gersh. Yes, they, yes, they well, are. Well, I was asking Joe before we went live, uh, can you, are you allowed to cut your hair? Good question. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I, so it's I, not in your contract. I don't, I don't think so. So like I the said. The boys never said, the brothers never said Well, to you. I don't, I can't remember a specific conversation. But Seems like I mean, you're I'm avoiding. sure they would say, you are killing us, Smalls, if I did that. Um, I don't know, though. I mean, I don't think so. I remember when I showed up the first season, I had kind of longer hair, and they gave me kind of like a bowl cut at first, and it was like, Oof, this is going to be tough for six months to have a bowl cut. And they kind of changed it. And they kind of, you know, anticipation for the second season kind of grew it, thinking, oh, it would be sick to have a mullet. Like, we should make that happen. <laughs> Just because, like, who has a mullet right now? And, you know, it would be great. It would work for the show. Um, and the woman, Sarah, who does uh, all the hair is just like, oh, my God, she's so great. Let's give her a shout out. Uh, Sarah, hi, Skill. So where are you? It's somewhere out she's there. She's out there. Uh, but yeah, I probably I want you to do this on the top. Probably just like well, fluff it one way or the other. I, I mean, I don't want to tell you, you know, what you can get away with. Sure. But I but get the feeling me. if you were to send a photo, uh -huh. uh, text a photo to the Duffers, you know, holding scissors yeah. kind of right here and just said, yeah. I'd like a pay raise. How, how much to not? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. You should do one better. Get like a professional makeup artist, put yeah. a bald cap on yeah. you, send that photo. Yes. <laughs> or just sideballs. <laughs> I honestly think if I shave my head, I don't think really, just because it's when the second season has come out, you know, more people have, you know, noticed me if I'm going to the Gelson's or whatever. Hmm. Uh, but if I shaved it on off, I really think that no one would know who I was. Actually, I think that it, it would not even. The hair comes into the room first. It's, yeah. uh, it was just announced for season three. I'm sure it was a fait accompli for, for all those involved, but it was just made public only a couple of days ago. Right, yeah. yeah. So congratulations on that. Yeah. Do we have a question I from do Twitter? Have, uh, um, several people have asked, and I like this one, do you mm -hmm. share any personality traits with the character Steve Harrington? Oh, for sure. I think that's kind of like um, uh, definitely a really nice character to sort of start with because it's kind of within close to my age and like close to sort of like socioeconomically where I was at that time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like kind of, in the, I, I don't know, and it just kind of, my father really reminds me of what that character might have been, like traits of my dad too. Really? Yeah, yeah, just because um, he kind of grew up in that time and he was like a little preppier as well. Um, and he was a dick to people. And he was a outcast dick to with outcasts cameras. with cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Great stories, millions of stories, really. No, uh, not not so much that, but I just think that, um, yeah, I, I think, I, I guess, to answer the question, yes, I think I do share some stuff. I think... Um, well, also, you bring your own sort of personality and, and charm that's heightened a little bit because he is... Uh, uh, 
Rico Suave in Rico, terms of, sure. of being a ladies' man. If it's either in his own mind right. or not, right. you have to give this guy some charm when he's talking to her and, right. and, and dating her and mm-hmm. trying to, uh, let's say, get to second base. Right. I think, and also the, the great part about the second season is that, like, you kind of get to see the character... Uh, sort of the role reversal where yes. you know she's kind of the top dog and he's kind of this like needy boyfriend and somebody who's kind of thrown all of his friends away and is so focused on making something work that he's just choking the situation you know what I mean and I've been in you know situations where I've kind of let friendships kind of go in order to kind of seek a relationship and I don't know I think that's kind of a a relatable sort of thing for sure you know yeah so. rarely works rarely works yeah yes i would say for sure rarely works yeah but i mentioned yeah. the train tracks because the scenes where it's just the t- you, yeah oh my gosh those were like the best days yeah. and night shoots oh yeah and the night sh- i mean yeah how old is he in real life uh 13 i believe 14 almost yeah yeah so night shoots already are just exciting for him because you're shooting at two three in the morning yeah i mean he's like He's like 40, actually. <laughs> Is he 13 going on 40? He's 13 going I, on that's, 40. That's us. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, actually, from Friction Geeks, reminds me a lot of, like, your character. <laughs> oh, honestly. thanks. Honestly, like, he has this, like, kind of aura of somebody, you know, who's well beyond his years. Wildly he's like, he's, he's, I feel like half the time he says things that I'm like, holy shit, like, how did, I don't know, he's just so smart and um, such a wise little guy. Pronounce his last name for me. Matarazzo. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Matarazzo. Yeah. Not bad. Sounds like a sports car. It's like a good cheese, you know. <laughs> or yeah. cheese. Sweet Matarazzo cheese. Sports car cheese. cheese. Yeah. <laughs> sports car made out Definitely of cheese. Definitely not from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, sweet ride. Is that a Matarazzo? <laughs> nice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, that was great because I think that also went into a lot of people were asking, like, what do you think about Steve's character, how, how he's changed from season one to season two, and mm-hmm. if you have a, so, but you kind of answered that. I no, he like. went from a typical 80s villain right. to wanting to be a hero mm-hmm. yeah. in season two. It's, yeah, I think it's like a, just because you don't really think really about that stuff. I mean, I, you sort of think about it. When, at least personally, I don't think about, like, you know, the arc, what the arc I'm trying to do, it kind of, like, will sort of inform itself when I'm sort of seeing it at the end. Mm. When, But, like, day to day, you're just trying to, like, be What's honest or whatever. whatever. Yeah. Play it real. But I think, it, like, overall, it kind of ended up being sort of like a classic, um, like, not like a hero's journey, but like this guy who kind of starts out as this kind of self-absorbed character, and it's just kind of him actually kind of like becoming more of a man and learning how to put other people sort of before himself whether it be the kids or the yeah. or you know when you're like l- loving somebody kind of sometimes allowing them to do their own thing when really what you want is to like you know have them for yourself sometimes it's not the best thing I don't know it's also something that is incredibly difficult to do in real life too is kind of put other people's you know wants and desires before your own if you love them enough I don't know it's tough right so especially I, now that you have the tabloids reporting it as well. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, so you just put on the blinders to yeah. that crap. Put the blinders on. You have anything, uh, another good one from the Twitter before I get back to the regularly scheduled? I want to give them an opportunity because we got more, way more than we've Yeah, had. it's a lot of repeats, though, and you're answering a lot of their questions, so mm-hmm. it's good. But also, um, what's your favorite 80s movie, and what movie have they not referenced yet that you would like them to? Damn. I mean, they've hit so many movies. Truly. They've hit so many. Um, we love the Ghostbusters. We're all yeah. about the Halloween. Oh, I think one of my favorite shots this entire season is the harbor shot when um, it's the end of one of, I think, four or five. It's the end of one of the episodes. There's this long turn in the tunnel, and it's him with, it's like totally Rage of the Lost Ark. You know, he's like looking, and it's just like zooming out, and this great music as well. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say my favorite, I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I, uh, Empire Strikes Back was 81? Uh, mm-hmm. 80. 80? I want to say 80. I 80? 80. I guess yeah. that would be my favorite. 77, 80, 83. Yes. That's my favorite prob- probably. 80s, 80s movie. It, was it 80s horror it's or 80. just 80s anything? No, just a- 80s anything. Man. There's, a, that's like, there's so many. 
So you have your tickets already for December 15th, or are you going the night before? I don't really know. I usually go at midnight. I've seen all of them at midnight. So in Chicago, they actually did this great thing when The Force Awakens came out where they played it like at 7 o'clock the day before, like instead of at midnight. Mm-hmm. So I went with all my friends. But I'll probably go and, you know, dress up. I'll wear my full Darth Maul costume. Of course. Because I don't see that you have an option. Of course. I'll get the little horns. Uh-huh. Yeah. That'll be great. I mean, all they'll see is the hair. Yeah. Uh, no, we've That's had our ticket. The bald cap comes in. The bald cap. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You're yes. pushing for that. It's a great idea. Uh, okay. So let's, because when I remember when I forced myself into David Harbour's life. Um, great guy, man. Great guy. Isn't he great? He, he, he's a great guy, but also full of life and life fulfilling yeah sort of personality mm-hmm. and a great mentor i imagine on this first important gig for you yeah a guy yeah. who's been around the block a time or six thousand actually yeah it's like you couldn't ask for a better and very generous i am i i would like to think very, we've not worked together but i he seems like a guy who would be incredibly generous in terms of his time and definitely i mean because when we spoke it was like one of the things he was saying is my character doesn't really like these little kids mm-hmm. on the show, the first season. So I had to kind of be a dick around them off camera because I didn't want to become that friendly with them. And I wanted this disconnect. But I don't know, he didn't mention what he was like with your character because you yes, guys didn't really have any. No, even this season, we've only maybe once or twice, you know. Right. Even in, or been in the same room at the same time. That's something that I definitely would like though. Yeah. I just think that is... Well, the pairing with him and Eleven in season two is yeah, pretty actually, spectacular. It's pretty spot. I mean, I think it's so great. And, yeah. But in terms of his time and being generous, I mean, yeah. Whenever uh, I remember... Because uh, Char- you guys are socializing while you're shooting in Atlanta, no? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, meeting up. Because it's a lot of time. You get a lot. Of, it's like six months of your life down in Atlanta. So, But, yeah, I remember... Um, yeah, Charlie was kind of going back and forth about this project that he was kind of considering and just hearing David kind of talk him through, like, listen, man, like, if you want to do it and you think it's good, like, you should do the project. If you don't want to, there's going to be a billion other things. You're going to have a, it's going to be fine. It's just like, it's don't just obsess. a long, it's a long game. You yes. Know? And you, and it's not and what some, young people think of. No. And I feel like myself, I get so, you know, sometimes I get really, not anxious it's just you know how can you not sort of feel the game aspect that it's like this like you know big you know thing that's happening all the time you're trying to like get the next part and you see all these other people getting all this stuff but like you know it's a long game and uh, like the work that you will do I guess you'll do your best work if you're doing projects that you're actually into rather than doing things that you think you should be doing. Exactly. So he's, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good role model to have on set and he's also just badass. He's so great in the show. He's just like, yeah, his character is so cool. It, it's a phenomenal throwback to yeah. the sort of anti-hero. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's... He, he, he's sarcastic and kind of, you know, And a unhappy. bit of a brute. Yeah. And, a, and um, yeah, there was something alluring about um, his, his character being out of sorts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, not just waking up to a hangover and lighting a cigarette the very first thing. But, yeah. But um, the first punch he throws, I think, is in the hospital. Yeah. Or he just sort of... Yes. It's, it reminded me of when Indy doesn't have the rope and he yeah. just pulls out the gun and yeah. shoots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's like, oh, oh, okay, well... I guess boom. I'm doing yeah, this now. Yeah, he's just, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 Um, so let's let's go through the the other big experience for any actor which is when you're shooting the thing Mm -hmm. nobody really knows about it Mm -hmm. um there's that weird in a bubble Mm -hmm. experience you don't know what's going to come of it um according to david um he remember conversations with winona where she was like this i don't think is going to be the one you know for any of us yeah I mean, maybe it just wasn't her uh, genre that she was a fan of to begin with. Right. I sensed. Um, the a bigger point being, 
you go in with best intentions, right? Mm -hmm. And and people have asked me over the years, did you know blank was going to be what it was? That is the question that Always. everybody wants to know. And the answer, of course, is no. No. What do you say? Oh, yeah. No, no, we knew. <laughs> no, we knew. No, we knew. Everybody at the studio yeah. said, yeah, this is your... Great. I'm glad we're Now, here. I will say in the case of Suspects, all I ever say is it was and remains the best script I've ever read. So mm. all, I, all we knew was yeah. the script, this material. The, what you're building everything off of. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what's going to come of it or whether people are going to give a shit, but mm -hmm. I will tell you I knew by page five right. that it was astonishing. Yeah. It seemed, so yeah. what was that part like for you? I mean, you're early in your life and your career, but yeah. still. Yeah. You've studied some of the greats, maybe, as an actor in, in doing theater in college, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know the difference between good material and bad material. Mm -hmm. You've done commercials now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you get your hands on this material, and it in itself is kind of reinventing a wheel, mm -hmm. right? I remember telling people about it, and I would say, you know, you dig the Spielberg kids on bikes and the trees, and, look, and there's a monster, and, yeah. right? Yes. So that genre really hadn't been, I don't think, given an original spin. Right. So when you're reading it, what is your take on that? I got, well, I guess I just kind of reading the script. I think David Harbour says the same thing. It's just, it was just an awesome script. It was just like an amazing script. And just like you said, like, I think movies can be made out of scripts that aren't so good, but it's way less common than just, you know, the script has to be really great to begin with because it's the foundation for everything. and. And then also, I think the, the two things that really, uh, it wouldn't have happened without is Carmen Cuba, the casting director, you know, finding these kids and being flexible in terms of, you know, I guess with the Duffer brothers who are the, the second, you know, kind of thing, you know, casting these people and kind of letting the people that they cast inform some things about the show. Um, and then the brothers, they're... It's just like, um, yeah, it, it was never really a doubt in my mind that they wouldn't make something that was pretty cool. They're just like uh, artisans, yeah. sort of. It they, sounds like from that lookbook and that They just knew exactly what they wanted they to edited. do. They edited. Knew, they knew. So if they got the right people to do the performances right. and they, they had the right backing. So it was really like... Um, I mean, you can never predict what's going to kind of hit that that kind of cultural zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, but I knew that kind of towards the end of filming, I was like, you know, I don't think this is going to be like a. I don't think this is going to be bad. I was. I right. thought it would be pretty cool, and I thought the people who liked that style, that Spielberg kind of Stephen King sort of thing, would be like, oh, this is like cool. Um, Did they show you guys anything before it debuted? No, I watched it on Netflix when it came out. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> even have Netflix. That was. I didn't even, <laughs> Yeah. You would was, think uh, a subscription would come with the gig. You, you would, would think, think so. I mean, come on, fiction. please. No, they never. Uh, no. <laughs> Damn, we got to cough call. up that eight bucks a month. Mm -hmm. That's a bitch. It's like twelve now or something, right? <laughs> oh, ooh, settle down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, <laughs> no, I think. Um, yeah, uh, the, it, getting this thing I mentioned I'm doing on Amazon. I had to buy my mother a subscription yep. and a Fire Stick. Yes. Right, and yeah. both of the, the installation. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with my nephew, yeah. and yeah. Um, mm. uh, but yeah, the brothers, I mean, they're just like, uh, I cannot wait to see what they do in terms, I think they're going to obviously see the show through, um, but also afterwards, I can't, they just seem like they're really, so many things nowadays are based off of movies or, or based off of books or remakes or something, and they just seem like really interested in making new and original material and stories, and I mean, I think there's kind of not enough of that nowadays, and right. they, 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 it's, they don't sort of have freedom? a life. They don't have a life. They just spend their, their, they write the whole thing. They direct, the, you know, the whole thing. They edit the whole thing. They're there for the music and the coloring, and you know, yeah. they, it's like they don't have weekends, and you can tell because of the way it all fits together. It doesn't feel like a bunch of different people did all these things. It really does feel like this is one person's. Well, that two, sort of you know. singular vision. Yeah can work a couple different ways for actors on set. Mm -hmm. So what kind of freedom were you given to, because you mentioned the great casting, but also allowing the actors to inform their roles. Totally, right? totally, yeah. Um, they're definitely up for all sorts of stuff on set. I think they have a, an idea of what they want, right. but they're always down to kind of talk about it and, you know, 
if I'm someone just because coming from Chicago, a lot of improv and stuff, that's something that I've always kind of incorporated and really enjoy and think it kind of brings like a life to the scene most of the times. So and being, how precious were they with their dialogue? Well, some we would probably we would get you know some of the takes where we would say one thing like the thing that they had actually written, and then you know say, hey, is it cool if we change this to this and this and this? And they'd be like, oh yeah, definitely. And you know some some of that stuff makes it in the final cut, and some of it you know it just really I think it really depends on the actor, right? Uh, and it really depends on kind it of it certainly scene. does. But yeah, and if there's if there's something that they like really need to punch, like they need to say like we will come back or something, you know, because it's like what they're zooming in on the last cut of the scene. They'll yeah. need that. But if it's just some sort of like, you know, spare dialogue sort of thing. But I think you're right. It really does depend on the actor because some actors, you know, I think are really uh, find a, not like a comfort, but it's just like they can really nail it in what's already given. So like, why do extraneous? Time? And when you get great writing, which is extremely rare, yeah, you'll find, I promise you, um, you can finally relax and just do the, as Spencer Tracy said, know your lines and don't bump into the furniture, yeah. which is, I, I love to have freedom too, right? Yeah. But there are moments when it's so well written and specific that you don't need to, that you don't have to even contemplate what you're going to do with it. Just do it justice. Seriously. Right. It's a, definitely. It's, it's a unique experience. Okay, so hmm. you're in the woods, you're getting a sense, it's going to go great, and then the summer of 16, it's getting to be July, mm -hmm. you've got yourself a Netflix subscription, you're Very excited. excited, living back in Suddenly Chicago. all this programming's available sure. to you. Yeah, all I these see all movies. these shows. House all of what? Yeah, House so many movies of mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which you have to tear yourself away from. Uh, when do you start to get a little trickle of... I think people are watching, but also because like I was going on about Rotten Tomatoes. It's just there's just new ways to find to out yeah. what how people give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what in the in in July August of 2016? What are you experiencing? Um, yeah, I don't. I, it's hard. It's like to a do random quantify. phone call from somebody. Is Not it, really. It's just kind of like. Um, are you on um, social media much? Yeah, I'm on, uh, I guess like a... At that time. I was on, I had like a like an Instagram. Um, I didn't have a Twitter. And I mean, yeah, I got like a bunch of people following me. That was pretty crazy. But I think like the, the strangest thing was um, going to uh, like a, like I went to a bar with my friends in Chicago, all the guys who I live with and um, just going and, you know, grabbing a beer or something like that. And somebody saying like, oh, you're from the show. Like, and just even noticing that you're, you know, that person from that thing, like, is kind of crazy. And then when that kind of happened, like, a little bit more frequently, being like, whoa, like, that is, you know, that's kind of weird. I guess I guess a lot of people have seen the show because there's actually, you know, there's no real way to kind of uh, quantify it, A, because it's on Netflix, and then B, because, you know, you know, I guess, how do you, I, I still don't think I really quite understand, like, how many people have seen it. Um, it's a hard question. There was never really like a moment where it was like black to white. It's just kind of been like this. A slow burn. A slow burn. And I think that when the show came out, it was kind of like a uh, boom. And then it kind of like was a slow burn and more people saw it. And then when season two came out, it was a similar thing where it was like, boom, a bunch of people saw it. And then it's slowly been kind of growing in other ways and stuff. But the media went a little nuts. Definitely. I think so. I mean, they went a little bananas. Yeah. For sure. Because the media is a 24-hour... Uh, yeah, they never turn that 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 uh, that machine off. Which means yeah. it's a ravenous, starving creature. Mm. And anything new and it's fresh, cool. they Suck all want to take credit. Look what I found. Yeah, look, I'm turning you on article. to this. Yeah, everyone prints forty of the right. same. Right, and that happened for Stranger Things, seemingly, in an instant. It did yeah. to to the outside world. It did seem from black to white yeah. or vice versa, whatever. Well, that's what I loved about season one was everyone, like anywhere you went, it's like you run into your friends and you're like, are you watching Stranger Things? Yeah. Was it, what episode are you on? Are you like, it was slow, like it was like you would learn about it from like just talking to your friends. Yeah. And, like that yeah. doesn't really happen anymore because no, no, there's no. really no more appointment television. That was like the closest we could get to having appointment television. And mm. then, you know, when the second season dropped, then it became a contest of like, well, how quickly can you watch it? Yeah, I think that's also <laughs> right. kind of like, yeah, that, that can be kind of like a, 
like a negative thing for a show, you know, just like um, you just the hype, you know what I mean? People now know Living about it. Seasons, so it's like, yeah. I think everyone was a little bit worried about that and not when we were shooting, but I think it's just something that's kind of like on well, people's minds. Also from maybe. season one to season two, the comparatively, mm -hmm. zero hype for season one. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to David. He was like, why are yeah, there they, no fucking no, billboards? There's nothing. <laughs> why is Netflix yeah. <laughs> not spending a penny to Definitely. let people know? In, in a bizarre was, way, it worked for them. It did. Yeah, because it like, of the world. But I just said the word of mouth thing. That's it, what, And it got people talking yeah. about Turning it. your friends on. Yeah, it was it like made, turning them on to an album, a comedy yeah, album. Exactly. Or a special. It, that's a really perfect way to put it. Like, it yeah. feels like more personal because you're like, have you checked this out? Like, check this out. Which Instead I was saying. someone say, check this out. Yeah. Which I was saying about the internet is this ravenous beast waiting to turn people on to what it discovered yeah the same thing was happening for individuals yeah, yeah. which is kind of a lost art hey mm -hmm. are you watching hey are you watching yeah now of course we're also overwhelmed with I, I i don't have time i mean how many new shows i know i know i mean when i'm trying to tell people about this marvelous mrs Maze, you're like i promise i'll get to it i will it's just the but list I've, is like <laughs> yeah people have like this long i've got all these shows sure. huge, and it seems like every day there's another right yeah so to it's stand cool. out it's like, from the pack it's like anti-marketing you know what i mean right it's like this sort of um i know people I think it's cool when people don't have like social media or, or something like that because it's like not having social media is, is and having this kind of like mystery yeah. is sort of just as intriguing as knowing what someone's doing every day of their life. And I think it's kind of similar for the show. Like if you don't know about it, you're like, what the hell is that show? You know, that's kind of yeah. almost more interesting now just because everything is like blasted. You know? Right. Yeah. So, but eventually though, you're getting your agent, your, your management, people are getting calls like the the thing piece you did with GQ. Sure. So when that starts to happen. Man, yeah, taking photos, what a bummer. It's the worst. What a, you know, it's a bummer. <laughs> you know J-Mac. Oh, yeah, J-Mac knows. Worse. <laughs> Sucks. It's I mean, like, people, you, nobody yeah. wants to hear an actor complain about I, anything. That, yeah. However, oh, so hard. however, but it's also nice to hear the insight of yeah. being yourself and posing and having a a well-known photographer or not yeah um it is by far that and wardrobe fitting it's just which like i hate so, which i i think yeah. just harkens me back to when my mom would take me to it's time for oh, back to school death, shopping i, I right always send you the clips with you. of um when marge takes bart school shopping uh -huh. and like oh he friends a doll his friends at the store and they're making fun of him like yeah. i always send that to kevin because he hates wardrobe fitting so much i'm like am i right you? you're bart am i right though? Side. yeah i mean it's terrible like, yeah like how? i remember being like mom these jeans are too tight i need baggy <laughs> jeans like i want these to be baggy you know so How like have just, you not pulled an Eddie Murphy then? Have your stunt double get fitted for you? A hundred percent. That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> I should send Max Daniels? My sure! Stunt double. I was going to say, what is he going to do? Send the <laughs> camera in? There's a long lens uh, straight on shot of Max Daniels on the dock with the gun and usual suspects right before the <laughs> shit goes crazy. Mm -hmm. That is Max Daniels, not me. Yeah. So Could have fooled I'm me? I'm telling you, this guy should definitely... Hey, Brilliant. There it is. He goes to the wardrobe fitting. Yes! I've never heard that If move. he's wow. got your measurements, if well, you're clearly the doubles yeah, on him he's anyway. He's going to have to have my measurements. Just send him <laughs> to the wardrobe yeah. fitting. I would have to get Max to eat a couple of donuts, I think. He's in a little better <laughs> shape. Um, Healthy choice. He'll just pile on fudge bars. Healthy choice. Just <laughs> That's right. A couple dollars. He'll eat some donuts. It's, yeah. yeah, so so the, the standing for photography, I mean, I hate having my picture taken because every picture I've ever seen of myself looks like does not look like the person i think i'm the eyes i'm looking out of i think that's true right? for most people for myself at least i think you're yeah i mean it's really bizarre. so posing and pretending you're comfortable with no scene partners no scene no dialogue no it's nothing not it's job. not organic it's not the job you signed up for also it's right. so different it's like um so awkward yeah i don't know awkward is the word it's, it's just fucking awkward. it's been yeah it's been like a challenge to learn how to do that stuff especially also at like you know going to a, like a pr the premiere or something like that and like going out and taking a bunch of you know photo it's just like the red carpet bizarre it's like so bizarre i like, end up making fun of the photographers yeah they're like they're... you know turn to the side take your take your shoes off make your you know, like <laughs> cra yelling crazy take your shit. shoes off like uh, very yeah. original yeah, yeah. yeah. they're just yeah. crazy people like mm -hmm. screaming you know like 
Joe, Joe, you know, like just like <laughs> wild, you know, yeah. just like I don't know. Oh, it's those are just again, the extras. Yeah, and those, <laughs> <laughs> can't complain. But yeah, it's, it's like a well, they're yeah, not complaints. I just I like <coughs> it's important to just relay the experience. Yeah, that is a yeah. bizarro world. It's it's very bizarre. Right. Yeah. It also sounds so, biz- but like to you know, like even meeting all you guys, it's like crazy to like you know watch people's work and then. And then meet them in person. Also, we have a like segment a called crazy. Ask Kevin, where you have an opportunity to ask me anything. We'll get to that. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but we do. <laughs> but we, <laughs> we, we also have a segment called Famous Questions, where I go out to famous folks who are friends or former or current co-stars okay. and have them pose questions directly to you. To me? This first one comes from your new bestie, Ben Schwartz. Oh. Oh, yeah. Man, he, that guy, he, Ben is the best. Yeah. He's the man. I used to, when I was working at that restaurant in Chicago, I used to, um, people used to tell me all the time, you'd be like, you look, Oh my gosh, you look exactly like that guy from uh, Parks and Rec. Even when I was just like working at the restaurant, and I'd say, oh, that's great. Hope you tipped me well. You know? <laughs> and, but everybody has always told me that, so it's really funny that you know people made the connection, and I don't know. And it's great because I got a chance to, I have always thought he's just so funny, and getting you know a chance to meet him and you know, yeah. and I'll spend some time with him. He's just a great dude yeah. and a hard worker. He's like the... He's been in 17 plates at all times. Uh, he's just like a, he's just a really talented guy. Well, he he's a big subscriber to uh, Jamie will fill in the blanks. If you're not creating, you're waiting. Yeah. So actors are waiting for the phone to ring. Definitely. And and you have to be proactive in your own life, but for certainly be proactive in your career because sure. no one is focused on it as much as you need to be. Yeah. No one's going to give you the right. You know, you're, yeah. You're the only one who kind of knows what. You really want to do. So the famous question from Ben Schwartz is. What does he need to know? What is this question? Joe, it's me, Ben Schwartz. My hope is that Kevin is asking this question right now. And if so, I would like him to do the next sentence as Christopher Walken. Okay. And I would like you to pretend that it's actually Christopher Walken asking you this question. And now I'm supposed to read this part as well. And scene, okay. Hi, Joe, it's me, <laughs> Christopher Walken. Yeah. Big Stranger Things fan. <laughs> cool bats. <laughs> My question to you is, what do you prefer? Crunchy peanut butter or smooth? <laughs> <laughs> and why? Thanks. I'm Christopher Walker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice going, Ben. <laughs> First of all, nice to meet you, Mr. Mr. Walker. Yes, um, please. Um, <laughs> Uh, to answer the question, I'd have to say 100% crunchy. Weird. Uh, An unfortunate, because smooth is where it's at. Well, <laughs> but agree to disagree, I guess. So I guess we have to agree to disagree. Why? Why crunchy? Because... Uh, That's one of the parts of the question. Does it, have the, it says why. Why? Because it, it has a, a, a big fan of PB&Js. I eat a lot of PB&Js. Sure. And I like my sandwiches to have a little, uh, little crunch to A little crunch of room. Yeah. I yeah, put yeah. potato chips in there sometimes. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's a, oof. I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> do, All right. Do you know that uh, a, a few weeks ago, out of the clear blue, I texted our pal Ben. Uh, this is before you and I had met, which was just today. And, uh, and I just said, hey... Out of curiosity, rounding to the nearest hundredth, how often do you think people stop Joe Keery and ask him when Undercovers is coming back? And that joke will make no sense until I explain to you Undercovers was a J.J. Abrams produced one season show that Ben was a star on in I think 2009. Oh my goodness. Get and, out of town. Uh, and so he enjoyed that joke very much, but his answer was zero. Zero. <laughs> exactly zero. Yeah. Well, it's funny, actually, on my way here, uh, somebody actually... Uh, <laughs> but there... It then, it's happened once. Yeah. <laughs> there became an internet <laughs> sensation <laughs> slash... Uh, request yes theory fan base thing yes where we are that his character slowly from parks start to 
Yeah, the notion is it's that Jean Ralphio is the son of Steve of Harrington. Steve I am his young father. I <laughs> will have him right. in season ten, right. <laughs> and you'll just right. they'll CGI his right. face onto yeah. a baby right. onto a baby's body, yep. which no one wants to see. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but it will be some funny, <laughs> weird, <laughs> beautiful yes. baby. By the end of Stranger Things, there's going to be that one scene where Steve's like waving to a woman in a car with like yeah. a toddler. He's like, "That's yes. my kid." We don't talk about. It's like it. I'll be holding the baby <laughs> yeah. like. This and I'll be looking at the camera and then I'll turn around and yeah, it'll just be Ben's <laughs> on the baby. It's like a beautiful, I just gave it away. Yep. It's got to happen, Duffer Brothers. Uh, question number two from our very own David Harbour. Oh, yeah. Um, are you jealous of David Harbour because of the time he doesn't have to spend in the hair chair in the morning, or is it for other reasons? <laughs> well, I would say um, uh, it's just for other reasons. <laughs> you know, he's got the, uh, we have this little feud over this, um, I'd say the only anger you're gonna, I'll, I harbor towards him. Nice! <laughs> is, uh, Wordplay. Yes, uh, there's this little dog that lives in the makeup trailer, Jillian's dog, it's named Georgie. We kind of had this feud where he would take these photos of him with this dog and, and put him in the trailer, and I would take photos of myself, sort of, and you know, send them to him or take his down or kind of just kind of tarnish his reputation with the dog. So sure. That's the only Ill, Ill will I harbor towards him. Again, Harvard. Harvard. Yes, just shut up. Um, other than that, we welcome pun jokes. You know, all puns are welcome here. Good. Uh, I just wish him all the well in uh, in Bulgaria. You said he's in, right? Now? Sophia, Bulgaria. Okay. Well, he's Sophia it. as the uh, the new and improved. Has he sent you any photos? <laughs> I think I've seen one, but he didn't send it. But I think it. Like, do you have? Well, I think they've I've got been. him in the costume and. His body is so redonkously built. Like ripped? Then ripped that my instinct was this is a costume. He couldn't possibly be in that kind he couldn't of possibly, shape. He couldn't possibly shred himself. It's redonk. Yeah, I And it's got to be pros prosthetics. I hope for him it's prosthetics because otherwise he has to maintain that. Yeah, because then this is the giant head yeah. gear. I don't, I see, yeah, I don't, I can't imagine. I mean, the time that it takes to get into that versus the time it takes for me to do my hair is probably, you know, mm -hmm. it's about equal. No, I'm kidding. This is probably <laughs> way, way, way worse than what I have to go through. And he's been there forever. Yeah. When do you guys, been, well, it, it, maybe it hasn't even, you've been told yet about. I, I think now it's finally been told. You go back in. I think like in the spring or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. In the spring for six months. Yeah. It's going to be hot. I'm never going to oh, find man. it. Anyways, those yeah. Atlanta summers are unforgiving. Oh, it's going to just be sick. Hellboy, by the way, for those of you, the, the, the three out of 10 million that don't know, he's, yeah. the, he's the new Hellboy. Uh, he has a follow-up question. Oh, great. From David Harbour. Yes, David? What are, and this is uh, a for real Z. What is your greatest creative failure thus far, and how has it affected you? We certainly learn more from our failures. Given your young age, I can't imagine there's many, but there must be somewhere. Creative failures. I mean, obviously, you blew it on the Jonathan audition. Seriously. <laughs> blew it. Tanked that one. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think it's like, you know, this is really my only thing that I've done that's been in the mainstream. So I've just sucked for a while in school, that's for sure. I, like, I've done a... I play music and stuff, but I don't sing like in a musical sense. So I did a musical where I kind of sucked pretty hard. I saw a video of it and it's just like, it's the same thing. I was like thinking I was crushing it and saw a video and was like, oh, okay. Maybe, you know, stay away from that stuff for a little bit. Um, I did the, did this ad where I had to play a bush. I played like this plant. Oh boy. <laughs> the singing That's, bush? No, it's like this, I was a bush. It was like for this, I think it was like hunting something hunting some hunting sort of website i don't know it's out there somewhere someone will dig it up on the internet but um man creative failure so if, i just feel like the majority of the thing even in the show honestly i feel like there are some scenes when i i rewatched it with my family when it came out and it was you know i feel like everybody kind of feels this way but you're kind of just like in some parts you're like i just totally missed the mark missed the whole point of that scene um and, you know it's like I, I guess uh, 
kind of inevitable mm -hmm. in sort of in sort of the work also to kind of think that you missed something like that I'd say probably the biggest challenge so far is exactly what Ben was talking about um, like self motivation and drive to create my own work and stuff that's been something that I've really kind of realized that's going to be important and something that I want to do because if you can get a jump out of that your current age yeah it's, you'll be ahead of the pack for it sure. just it just seems like I have a really strong idea of like the parts that I'd like to play or the type of projects that I'd like to do or the way that I'd like to work or something like that. Well, that's like what that. he's done. And, and I, yeah. I also encourage the hell out of that. Right. I because mean, why not? Wh exactly. Why not? And then also when you kind of have like the ownership over it and you're not just like playing a part in someone else's thing, I, you care about it way more. You're, you're kind of like bound to do more work. But I think the hardest part is staying focused and like not being like, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go to the beach, or I'm gonna like you know just take a second and step away from it. Kind of knowing when to just get you know kind of be hard on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. How are you with discipline? Because that's that I'm, either comes naturally or it doesn't. But if you're playing sports. I imagine you were it was yeah, drilled into you. Yeah, I'm both. You know, if it's like a project that I'm really interested in, and you know something that I'm like really kind of a absorbed with, I'll kind of really bang it out. But if it's like kind of in the early stages or um, me and my dad both kind of have this thing where we're like starting projects and sometimes not finishing them. Well, that's fairly human. Yeah. I, I think everyone suffers from that to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just kind of making sure that, you know, just finish it. Because I think, you know, finishing something is better than just kind of have, having something that... I have so many things that have like almost been done and then I've kind of ditched them and said, oh, I'll come back to this once I have kind of like a fresh insight. And then it's like when you come back, you're kind of too far... Yeah. from it or from where you were when you were doing it. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Was it a full six months on season two also? Yeah, it was like six months. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I have to ask a question that, uh, that, that everyone is dying to know. I'm sure this has come up all over Twitter. Uh, you're back in Atlanta to shoot season two. Yeah. And now you're starting to work on season two, you, everyone is aware that you're a part of a redonkulously right. successful, Definitely. exciting show. Mm -hmm. The antithesis of what everyone was feeling while shooting season one. Mm -hmm. How much better is craft service? How much better is craft <laughs> service? <laughs> it's the same. The cra craft service is the same. Because it was Netflix, so it was great to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will say, craft service down in Atlanta. It's really good. It's actually like <laughs> kind of bad sometimes, just because I have to like you know, I, I'm not I'm you know got a. Do you, you have know, a weakness? Crazy. Do you have a weakness at the craft service a, table? I I don't really have too many vices. You uh -huh. know, I, mean? I don't like smoke or really do any. You know, I I have very few vices, but I feel like sometimes if I ever, you know, delve deep into my vice, it would be like the. Orson Welles, Marlon Brando, heavy eating. I would just <laughs> eat myself to death if I. Could. I just love to. And what eat are the go-to? What are the go-to? Let's specific, let's stay with the craft service table. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the go-tos there? Man, they have really great breakfast burritos. That sure. I, they have like also. I just like to have like raspberries and they have like fruit just berries it's okay like first of all of, brando yeah never had a, a huge never berry, he's a berry guy never. he's a huge <laughs> berry guy <laughs> then it's in the form of a pie yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay okay yeah. oh they have really good bread pudding that's oh, good night. that's good night. my that's my favorite me too little, yep. or Guilty. like if you do like banana bread with ice cream oh. and they have these i mean now like we're getting yeah. places it's like now we're know, brandoville yeah, yeah this yeah, is so. what orson wells how he went down yeah he just like I think I'd be <laughs> chips and soda all day yeah I also love, like the salty and then I'm such a soda just, yeah I also just love cheeseburgers like I just oh, love them yeah it's just like a really it's the great perfect meal it's a perfect little thing and yeah. they're not good for you you know they're bad so what can I make a suggestion do you have a wait I want to ask do you have a favorite cheeseburger oh man he's gonna come up with a Chicago something one that like, we're not gonna know something probably. like classic something like you know um 
something like homemade, something classic. I don't oh, know. Oh, really? There's no restaurant or place that you're, I mean. you're going I to? I guess, I don't know, in and out That's great. what I knew you'd say. Did yeah. we steer you to, yeah. changed to a great one here in Los Angeles? Sure. Yeah, have you been that? to Apple Pan yet? Apple Pan. Never even It was Elvis Apple. Presley's favorite cheeseburger oh, no. in Los Another Angeles. Another guy who had just <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> died that With way. both hands, too. Yeah. You're not wrong about that. Cheese and... But the Apple Pan. Where is that? Not too far from where you say you Pico and Overland, basically. Pico and Overland. Okay, the Apple Pan. Yeah. Very, it's been yeah, there since, I think, the 60s. Cool. Or maybe the 50s. It looks, it's a little... Yeah. Speaking no, of... No, it's been there since the 20s. What? Yes, it's been there since like 28 or something. Imagine how many apples they've yeah. used in their dishes since that yeah. time. Since we get our Thanksgiving pies from there, except for the one that Sammy brought. Oh, since we're Jason talking... did remind me, closed on Mondays, cash only. Oh, great. <laughs> very, <laughs> great, very great, very great info. Very also, important yes. information. Since we're talking about food, yeah. Yeah. I'm dying to ask our guest about a pizza commercial. Sure, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, right. Pizza. You were pizza we're in Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Talk about iconic 80s. I know. Huge fan of Ferris Bueller. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Jamie has great. a very good point, though. Not that it's going to change your view. <laughs> sure. But it's one that I had not heard before. The okay. character of Ferris Bueller is... He's an asshole. He's, He's a an sociopath. So, yeah. He is He's a like a real prick. psycho. Yeah. He is a complete yeah. psycho that fucks it's, over his friends. It's so fun, though, to watch, though. Isn't Super, it? Fun. So fun. Yeah. Super fun. Super fun, but wildly fan. self-indulgent. Yeah. And I love John Hughes. That's not one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. It You're a nutty for John Hughes. Man, I think the coolest part about doing that was honestly just... Uh, remaking shot for shot and going and... Um, just studying, uh, not stu like studying, that sounds so fucking bogus. Like just going in and kind of trying to do my best Ferris for each, you know, take and trying to get the run perfect in the way that he grabs the can and the way, that, you know, all that stuff. It's yeah. like really fun to do that sort of stuff. So, who directed um, that? It's got Matt uh, Linsky, I believe his last name is. Okay. Yeah, cool Did guy. Did you shoot down at the house in Long Beach? Yeah, it was his actual, yeah, it was the Long Beach house. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy, yeah. Yeah. And running, and I mean, yeah. And Alan Rock, too, was there as well. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy, meeting him and having, actually had lunch with him. I think we actually even had bread pudding that day. Ah! Uh, <laughs> yeah, not too bad uh, here, either. They do pretty good. Very nice. Yeah. Um, is there anything more from Twitter you want to chime in with before we... Um... Nope. Jamal? No? Wait, no, I just, no, I just, you just reminded me, I was trying to think of, there was something I was watching, mm -hmm. and then Jaden had come into the room, and I was like, I have a hard time watching this, because it's one of those, where like, the characters like, can't seem to get ahead, and I hate that, and it was, and I, you just, uh, I was just reminded of it, because Jason texted me, because this has been killing me for like, three days, mm -hmm. it was Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Uh, That's like a tough movie for me to watch, because I'm like, they just, I was like, they just can't get Yeah, it's ahead. like, you're just like, <laughs> what? Yeah. That was it, that's why I snapped at you just love, now. Sorry, I got distracted. Love, love, love that movie. But it was like eating at me since like Thursday. Yep. So that's why I had to. Fine. We went to a screening of that at the Arrow and John Candy's daughter was very sweet. She was there. Mm -hmm. I uh, came up to me. I had worked with him, of course, on his last movie. Mm. And um, it was really great to see her because she was just a little girl when mm. I met her on uh, Canadian Bacon. It's now, oh, well, Post Animal. So this is the band you're in and oh, have yeah. been in for quite some time. Yes. Yeah, so I listen to the, the music mm -hmm. and um, wowsy. A little crazy. It's spectacular. Oh, thank you. No, really. Thank you. And influenced by who would you say? Um, bands. There's some good modern day bands mm -hmm. like um, uh, Tame Impala and Pond and um, Ty Siegel and Fuzz. But then there's some older bands, of course, classic bands like uh, Black Sabbath and uh, ELO and Pink Floyd and um, the Beatles, of course, and um, just music that, oh, uh, Steely Dan, one sure. of my favorites, Stevie Wonder, maybe. We, I, I think everybody in the band kind of has like similar interests. We all kind of connect on some interests, but then we all kind of have these like outlying things that different people like. So like. Um, but how do you describe the sound? Um, it's like psychedelic rock is kind of where it falls right. into these days. There's right. kind of like a psych rock, you know, thing that kind of seems to have re resurged in the last, I don't know, five or ten years or something like that. And uh, but yeah, it's just been something. Uh, my best friend Sam and I watched the movie School of Rock when we were in, I think. 
grade school. Oh, sure. And God, then we were yeah. like, holy moly, we got to play music. So I started playing, been a hobby for a while. First drums. First drums. And then my friend Sam had a guitar, so he kind of taught me how to play. And then kind of learned bass in high school from my buddy of uh, mine. And then uh, a lot of the guys nowadays, there's just because it's the recording uh, equipment is... You, you can kind of it's not like you have to really go to a studio anymore you can kind of have access to the uh, tools that you'd need to record on your own so a lot of people kind of do these home recordings and then kind of enhance them in the studio or kind of send them out to other people so it's kind of like something that I've always done is work on my own songs and then um, also with the band we all work on stuff together and yeah, it's just has been a hobby, and obviously, I think like when Stranger Things came out, it was helped the band and kind of uh, gained a little notoriety that way. But um, I, it, schedule-wise, it's been it's it's uh, yeah, kind of just been crazy having to do other things, and it's kind of taken me away from the band for a little bit. But um, they toured all this summer and. Um, kind of gained a little notoriety aside from Stranger Things, which I think is kind of an important thing to do. They toured with and without you? Uh, with me, like around last year, uh, this time, but then without me this summer. Right. And then the, we recorded a record, uh, two, I guess two, no, 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 last summer. Um, and that will be coming out in... Um, uh, in the spring as well. Is this so. part of a new record deal that you guys signed? Yeah, so the guys, yeah, kind of when they were on the road, kind of pounding the pavement, sort of, yeah, were out looking for some sort of representation, got hooked up, and yeah, excited for that to come out, because it's been a while, kind of did it um, uh, right before the show came out, actually, is when we, um, yeah, so it was like probably last July it was recorded, and it'll be cool to get that out. When do you, did you say that comes out? In the spring. I don't know the exact date. Uh, I think it's in April, though. Okay. Yeah. So that's exciting. Look for that. Post Animal. Yeah. Um, all right. So it's time for Ask Kevin. You're allowed to ask one question. <laughs> I've got to make it count if it's only one, right? It can be really lame and stupid. There's no um, pressure here. I'm not going to ask you something as lame as the peanut butter question. Smooth. I made that clear. <laughs> I made that clear. Yeah. I don't know if that was you or if that was the True. character because you're just so... True. I was dialed in. So into. To crazy pants. I guess, here's, uh, what's kind of the most, um, what's the best advice you would give to like someone who's coming up, being someone who's been in the industry for a long time? I mean, you probably have seen people come and go and, you know, do all these things. What's kind of like your take on the whole thing? What's like you, the best thing or kind of... Well, I would say yeah. diversifying, as I said before, but you've already got a band that you're passionate about, right? And you've got this, this hit show. So you're afforded an opportunity now, and I would say pounce on it in terms of beginning to diversify, whether you want to write, whether you want to direct, whether you want to develop other material, whether there's a book that you're crazy about that you want to bring to the screen. Mm -hmm. You have a golden opportunity right now. I would not waste that. Yeah. So as much as I like to be lazy sometimes too, when I know there are certain things locked in, you know. Um, I have a, I, I think I have something to add to this. Please. You, this is something that you told Joey and Vanessa recently that because it took you so long to just ask for what you wanted or something like that. Yes. That would be something else. Hmm. When, when working on something. Is that what yes. you mean? Yeah. Well, you can, I'm, you explain it better, but it was something like. Well, I was told early on uh, starting out, uh, save your money, but also yeah. production will fuck you at every turn, <laughs> which means, and I found this in Atlanta when I was there shooting someone who I admire so great, a, a comedian, Bill Burr, who's starting to get into acting. And we were on this shoot that we were there, this Jason Reitman movie about Gary Hart called The Front Runner. Hmm. And, and we were both given this call time and I said to him, they don't need you until nine. You don't. You need to push back on this six thirty bullshit. Yeah. Because look at these scenes they have on the call sheet. Before like they're they, not going to get these. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Don't be a dick about it, but just learn that it's okay to say, "Can we push a little? Can we make me a will notify? Do you want to get in in the morning and figure this out? Talk to the first second AD, 
and don't be afraid. Is that what you meant, by yeah. the way? Ask what you want for, or? Man, that's funny to say, I'm a total rule follower. They're like, show up at 6.15, showered, and I'm like, yeah. You know, just because I'd like them so. By like the I'm way, the greenest little, little guy. But there's nothing wrong with being a rule follower, yeah, honestly yeah, yeah. and truly. In fact, it's the best way to begin the the voyage. Yeah, but don't like if there's some crazy thing. Don't pick and choose to tiny your, yeah, tiny battles def- to fight. Definitely. Yeah. Um, the bottom line to all of that is the same way I was saying to diversify because no one believes in you and what you want to accomplish more than you. Yeah. Don't count on management and agents to, to come up with a path for you. Yeah, definitely. But also, don't be afraid to have enough confidence to, A, turn things down, but also um, just push back a little bit on things that you really want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. So uh, have the courage, because it turns out, when I, I came from stand-up comedy, and stand-up comedy, you say yes to every gig that comes your way because you just need stage time sure. and you want to get out there and do it. Mm-hmm. So then as an actor, when I crossed the goal line of having to audition to getting offers, right. I was a girl who couldn't say no. Yeah. Consequently, I did literally 40 movies in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Shortly after you were born, mm-hmm. in fact, 92, mm-hmm. A Few Good Men came out. Mm-hmm. So then I said yes to, not for... Uh, a money grab or anything or say yes to shitty scripts but just oh my god they offered me something i I can't believe this is happening right right definitely yeah so in terms of that phase don't be afraid and i i look back at one particular project that i just said no to out of that group and i had very specific reasons Mm -hmm. and in show business when you say no they think it means you just want more money yeah and they try to find the number yeah would they make you feel fiscally irresponsible to say no? Totally, yeah. Totally. Like I, I yeah, could, I think that's totally true. Yeah. Right. So that that becomes those challenges, and it's like a whole different set of challenges than when you start. Yeah, it, I feel like I've kind of just kind of coming into this whole, yeah, it's exactly the sort of thing you're talking about. Just kind of. You know, it's you're taste. Right. It's like, you yes. know, you're... You so know. What do you want to do? So I would say, use this opportunity, this moment in time of the success of the show to spend some time thinking about what it is you want to do, what kind of projects. Like I mentioned, is there a book mm-hmm. you always loved that no one has brought to the film yet? Yeah. Or to a film, or, or, or anything like that. Hmm. Or is there an idea, something that's crossed your mind that you want to develop? Seek out like-minded people so that the same way with Harbor, you know, I just yelled at him on Twitter and we went out and had dinner. Just like doing that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the opportunity. But I, yeah. I've got a script that I'm directing and I sent it to him and said, you, I would love you to be in this. He read it, went nuts. I yelled at you kind of the same thing. Yeah, I want to send yeah. you a script. So you're in this opportunity where you're sort of gaining fans who don't know you. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the questions I had actually was. Were there some famous people that yelled at you on Twitter or elsewhere? The, the, one of the coolest that right. I ever got was after the first season, um, Catherine Heigl, who I'm a huge, I like think she's so great. And you right. know, she's, A, she's been in so many great things. And I think at the time I had just finished one of the seasons of Transparent. So I was like, you know, um, and then I saw her at a thing and I was like, I think it was like a, at the same time, we kind of were like, oh, I'm such a big fan. And you know, that type of stuff is you know crazy crazy also donald glover is a guy who i've met and he does music as well and that's like he he's just been like really kind to me every time i've met him and yeah it's really crazy to like you know i mean like i said like you guys it's like having people know you know the work that you've done and i don't know yeah it's it's cool it's it's right. very cool but it also makes you want to like continue to do stuff and well continue. so it needs to go from being cool as soon as possible yeah. to use it use it um in the best possible way. Yeah. Right? Like we're lucky that Elon Musk is is our Nazi. Yeah. It used to be the old saying from <laughs> the guys who worked in the space program um, were some of them were German physicists who we captured and then had worked for us. Yeah. Came the term our Nazi. But they're either gonna work for evil or they're gonna work for good. Yeah. So you have an opportunity to and not just, wow, I can't believe this is happening, to 
be a little more um, controlling of your destiny. Yeah. If you have those ambitions, maybe you don't. But if you're asking what sort of advice, I would say push back on the projects you believe in and, and the challenges that come to you. Like push back in a, in a... Well, what you really want. Yeah. Right? So if your agent or manager is saying, here's the things that are going on, we really think you should do this thing. Sure. Because it's pretty wonderful and this, that, and the other thing. And you read it and don't have that reaction. It's pretty easy, especially at a young age, to say, to get along and go along. Mm -hmm. You people have been in show business much longer than and I have. I'll just, yeah. yeah you know what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. Trust your gut. Trust your instinct. It's, it's also hard, though. I feel like there's it's like really hard because there's times when I'll read stuff and I'll say, "Oh man, I really love this part of this script." Right. But I hate this. Right. It's like I feel like I would I, when I thought of these kinds of situations, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm either gonna love it or I'll hate it." But th there have been things where I'll see parts of you know, it's it's never as black and white as you as you might think. So kind of working through and trying to like figure out trust that instinct. To, you know, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So. In that case, if someone's interested in you in, in this project mm -hmm. and you think this part over here is fantastic sure. and great and amazing yeah. and this part stinks. Push back again, like, well, maybe we can... Can I meet with this person who's, who's interested in me and have a conversation about it? Yeah. Instead of just a blanket yes or a blanket no. Yeah, definitely. A regretful yes. Yeah, because then you're just the actor in someone else's thing and not kind of a... Get involved as soon as you can. Yeah, if you have these creative instincts. Yeah, definitely. That's like the best part about working on the show is that the brothers are so they're collaborative. They're like want to hear what you have to say. And that's Which, why I feel as like it turns out, is out. rare. That's not the norm. Yeah. You should know that also. Crazy. So thrive in that mm -hmm. would be uh, the advice. Great advice. And not that you asked me for my advice. Please, Sam. <laughs> but it's a little more practical. Uh, if you can, always try to make sure that you have final approval on all wardrobe choices. <laughs> mm -hmm. And beyond that, never, ever, ever say yes to the wardrobe department about a pair of shoes that are even a little bit uncomfortable. I ha that is such good advice. I have done like full press days yeah. and just been like unable to walk. walk. Like this is Because they put you terrible. in suits and shoes. Or just I'm in these shoes that feel like they're petrified. Yep. Yep. You know? It's like they're ill fitting, like too new, not broken in. That's a mistake I've made too many times and to you, count. You go to the thing and you're like, oh yeah, this ah, this should be fine. Like yeah. you're like yeah. like worried or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You can maybe able to walk advice. around in it for ten minutes, but try fifteen hours. Yeah. Not happening. Come to the Jews if you have questions about comfort. There you uh, go. Yeah. That, that reminded me of how James L. Brooks is that tells you to bring a uh, change of socks. Yeah. Change of socks. <laughs> I asked James L. Brooks for 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 um, directing advice. Any advice on directing my first film? And he said, bring a change of socks. <laughs> bring a change of socks? Yeah, and at lunch, after eating, I changed my socks and I felt like I had a fresh <laughs> start. Start that on the second half of the day. Good it's something you advice. would never think of. Wow. And I can't, thank you for reminding well, me of that, actually. I'll tell the brothers, maybe they would like that. <laughs> James Letterman it's had did that for years. Change your fucking change socks. Change your, your socks. fucking socks. Um, all right, it's time for Kevin Pollock's pop quiz. Okay. Between five and 15 points possible for each of the three questions. And once the final score is tabulated, it will be posted on our website, along with the current standing among the top 100. Are you ready? Yes. Question number one. Yes. Sammy Davis Jr. or Ann B. Davis? Do you have any idea who either of those are? I don't know who Ann B. Davis is. Sammy Davis she Jr. was the housekeeper Alice. on the Brady Bunch. On Alice. Brady Bunch. Oh, Alice. Alice, the Brady Bunch. Yes, yeah, so it just like which one is who do I like more? Or just, I would say Sammy Davis Jr. Correct. Honestly. Okay, great. Question number right. two. Okay. Carl Weathers okay. or the weather in Carlsbad? Carl Weathers. I Correct, also. Say. And the last question, <laughs> Keith? Moon? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Very that's well correct. done. <laughs> very well. As a drummer, yeah. it should have been painfully yeah. clear. I didn't know if you were going to say Sutherland. I didn't know if you were going to say... <laughs> oh, that's my favorite. Thank you for playing along. It's just any opportunity for me to pose the question. Great. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my uncle's name. I was Sedellis. Oh, wow. Uh, and thank you, uh, those of you who wrote in on the... Um, on the questions on Twitter um, and participated in today's show. 
Now, we're going to draw on some improv skills that you picked up in the Chicago land area. Oh. You, uh, you, you saw me read the Larry King game at the top of the show. Somebody okay. won themselves a T-shirt, which you've already got in your uh, red gift bag. Holy there. smokes. That's okay. right. And a travel mug version. I, I, I was going to say, I hope there's something like this in there. Cause yeah, been, there's I've a travel mug for the car. i touching this the entire time. It's, it's been pretty been, good, yeah, right? Yeah. touching the... All right, so the game is called the Larry King game. You're... Just on the cusp, age-wise, yeah. to know actually who that is. But, um, so he had a show on CNN, you may Larry remember, King. from your Larry youth. King. There we go. You're there. You're halfway there. If you need some props, sure, let me yes. know. So, to play the Larry King game, yeah. you must do a bad Larry King impression. I don't want a good one. I'm not interested. Okay. I really want it to stink. And then we need you to recreate that moment where right before Larry would go to the phones and talk to America, he would yeah. take a call from a, some city somewhere. He would call out the name of the city. He would suddenly look down the barrel of the camera and decide to share something about himself or his thoughts or his opinions that no one cared about. Okay. Uh, little King's things. So when King's doing things, when Great. doing the Larry King game, not Stephen, no nope. Larry, no, no. Okay. Create that moment where right before Larry goes to the phones, he stops and looks into his camera and share something about himself that no one needs to know, right? Minutia. And okay. then, to finish it, go to that city. And what would he say? He'd be like, Name any San city Diego. you want. May what do you got to say? If the city like is that? funny sounding, all the more enjoyable to us uh, here at the front okay. office. Could be Newburyport. It could, could be. have been. Could have been. There's your camera when you're ready, the Larry King game. He had like coffee on the show, mm -hmm. right? He definitely did. Is he a lefty or a righty? I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> Method. What I wouldn't give for a cold tuna fish sandwich. <clears throat> yep. From Amesbury. There it is. <laughs> yep. Yep. Is the one. All this time, I thought of Larry as a hot tuna fish sandwich lover. Oh, <laughs> no. probably. Man, were you wrong, Sammy? Wrong. Cold all wrong the way. From that. Keep I it scold. out of the sun. Uh, Joe, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. I hope it. this was painless. It was fun, enlightening. Does and it feel cool. like we went for uh, over two hours? Two hours? You got to be. <laughs> no, no, that's right. 12.30 we started at. A little off. Yeah, we're just coming up. Just uh, we're almost coming up to two hours. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. You had a good time. Yeah. That's yeah. all the Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Don't forget your gift bag. Now you sit there uncomfortably while I wrap things up for the folks okay, at home. Okay, please, yes. There's your Joe Curry, ladies and Jews. That's how we do it here on the Kevin Pollack Chat Show. Sammy, Jamie, thank you so much as always. Uh, Luke, everybody's favorite. We had a visit from Brian. We sure did. Uh, who asked me to uh, uh, said hello and said feel free to say our um, uh, the world's greatest intern uh, with just one leg. Oh, yeah, new title. Before I said that, I wanted to make it clear that this was his idea. Okay, yes, because it sounds a little odd coming from me. Right. If you follow the show, you'll have some background on on what that means and why we would mention it. But it was great to see him. We have not seen him in six months. Yeah. So, <laughs> since the accident, as it were. Uh, so and meeting his father, Bob, who, as yep. it turns out, thank goodness you asked yep. Sam if he had a name. I mean, it was weird to introduce himself without a name. But, hi, I'm uh, Brian's I, father. I thought maybe he might be like a hitman. And you yeah. said, hi, Brian's <laughs> father, do you have, have a name? name. <laughs> and I had her thinking, yes, he does, Sam. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what it is. Jaden Fox on makeup. Thanks, great work as always. Floor director, Kenny Chen. Up in the booth, we've got uh, J-Mac and the return of Dodger Blue, Mike Duman. <laughs> That's got a sting. Just a little. Youch. Much like Doug Benson, before a show, that ball is high and outside. All right. Uh, thank you, Jamie, for that one. Um, <laughs> let's see. Next week, I have no idea, but the week after that will be uh, the lovely Jennifer Tilly. Yeah. So exciting. Uh, stay tuned for more. I think that's it. Write to us again, kpcsfanmail.gmail.com. Yeah, that'll do it. Until next time, and as always, get out of my face. <laughs>